We are well past the halfway point, detectives. It's time to get down to facts. We know the killer has a cell phone. We've seen them hold it up to Darby's face. Which characters have cell phones? We've seen David with a cell phone, Oliver with a cell phone. Am I missing some? The killer has a cell phone. Many people had their cell phones collected on the trip to the retreat. The killer is a hacker. They would have needed to hack to cover their tracks around Bill's room. Should we assume that every character is a hacker, save Zeba, who we've told isn't a hacker, and filmmaker Martin? Todd is apparently not a hacker either. The killer knows Zoomer's birthday. Why? Because you need that to get into the Wi-Fi. Plus, Zoomer's birthday seems to be the code to where the morphine shots are stored. Again, they could have learned this the way Darby did via hacking. The killer knows Morris code. They used Morris code to lure Darby to an attack in the pool. Who knows Morris code? Well, Bill did and Sean did. Admittedly, they're both dead, but the killer would also need to know that Darby knows Morris code. Now, if she put that fact in her book, The Silver Doe, who's read The Silver Doe? Lee says she has, Martin did, David said he did, possibly Todd since he was at the book signing. The killer has a set reason for killing people. They could have killed Darby in her hotel room, but they didn't, they warned her. And then theoretically she did something and they tried to kill her in the pool. At the end of this podcast, after your feedback, we're gonna go over what I consider the worst, another theory that we may have to consider. Who is the killer? Let's solve a murder at the end of the world. Episode five, chapter five, Crypt. Darby confronts her suspect only to find the tables turned and an unexpected alliance formed until someone else dies and her own life is threatened. We'll be breaking down each episode for clues, suspects, and red herrings on the hunt to learn who killed Bill Farah and Rohan and, oh no, they killed Sean. Spoilers for the first five episodes of A Murder at the End of the World. If you haven't seen these first five episodes, pause this video. Snort some Adderall, drink lots of alcohol, and take an ill-advised midnight swim. And then come back and watch. Use the timestamps below to jump to the topic or suspect you want to hear. And skip past stuff you don't want to hear. We are in the home stretch. We need to solve who's the killer. I put out a poll on our YouTube community page and on Twitter. And look at these results. Now in all these poll options, I can only have four people. So I put Andy as an option, Lee as an option, AI Ray, or if you just want to say technology, then I had other. The most interesting thing I think about this poll is in both polls, now admittedly there are not many votes. Here on the YouTube community page, there are only 150 votes, but Andy is in last place by a mile. Similarly on Twitter, barely over 30 votes, but Andy, nobody votes for him. Is that because as the host, it seems too obvious for it to be Andy? What do you think? Please. Go to our YouTube community page at YouTube slash C slash Double P Media and then click on Community tab or go to our Twitter account at Double P H Q. Let's hear your vote. We want to solve this case. If you love whodunits and fair play murder mysteries and you're a reader, let me recommend one of my favorites and that's The Puzzle Doctor who's at classicmystery.blog online. His blog is named In Search of the Classic Mystery Novel and it's spoiler-free reviews of fair play detective fiction. Recently, he's been giving reviews for some holiday-themed murder mysteries. His October book of the month was The Twelve Days of Murder by Adriana Cordani. I pick this one up. I'm going to be reading it here over the holidays. His November pick of the month is Murder Most Cold, book four in the Smart Women Murder Mystery series by Victoria Dodd. I read the first book, very funny, for those of you who like comedy with your murder mysteries. Just thought I'd give him a shout out for everybody who likes reading whodunits. Classicmystery.blog. If you're watching on YouTube, you gave us so many likes last week. Wonderful. Now let's see if we can break the comment record for A Murder at the End of the World. For episode four, we got over a hundred comments. Hey, let's go down and let's see if we can break that. For everybody on audio podcast, or hey, you don't want to write something on YouTube, no, you can reach out to us on social media at double PHQ. That's the word double, single letter P for podcast HQ for headquarters on Twitter, Instagram, and threads, facebook.com slash double PHQ. Email hello at double PMedia.com. Before we run down the suspects, let's look at what episode five taught us about the victims. First up, Bill Farah, a.k.a. Fangs. In the past, 
Darby tells Bill that he smells like pine, gasoline, hotel soap, and then because they're near a forest fire, smoke. Bill sees this forest fire and he thinks about climate change, saying one day there won't be any place to go. Bill loves Darby, but he wonders where he falls in her priorities. He asks her if she would ever stop working on the case, and Bill doesn't seem happy with her response. We see him freaking out over cell phones and technology. This should set up his switch to be fangs. Bill says the ominous line, you'd only love me if I'm dead. Did Bill want to die to get Darby's love? Did Bill fake his own death to get Darby's love? Rohan. Not sure we learned anything new about Rohan in this episode, other than, again, somebody went into this medical center and hooked up the pacemaker software device. Sean is still struggling post-tracheotomy, but she can't talk and communicate. After her trip to the moon, stopped even killing spiders. Sean dies shortly after telling Darby that, hey, there's a lot of money in Zoomer because of his trust fund. Also, Sean dies shortly after Darby tells her that Zoomer isn't Andy's child. Did either of these events cause the killer to kill Sean? Now let's run down the suspects, and first up, Darby Hart. In the past, Darby is working this case. The silver ring, which they got from their last interview, inscribed E. Bell, apparently was in Sacramento, California in 1929. Eunice Bell had a son, Edward Bell, but then his son is a cop who got married to a Patricia who vanished shortly after she moved in with this son. Darby is not doing well. Not only is she obsessed with these cases, but she's getting Adderall at truck stops. Youch. Bill brings up some very smart points about, hey, this killer wants to be found, and we're just going to go to their house and find them. And she attacks Bill, saying she thought he was different. Did she get Bill killed? In the present timeline, while still under the effects of a concussion, Darby hops in an elevator, which is located in that kind of medical room, and it goes down deep into the Icelandic rock. She becomes a bit of a partner with Andy for a very brief time, but she's also still too trusting of Lee. She tells Lee that Andy told her that Andy's sterile and Zoomer has to be somebody else's kid like Bill. Sherlock Holmes would not do this, Darby. Oh, boy. She's had a concussion. She's in the concussion protocol, but she's still snorting Adderall. She's drinking whiskey, and she needs something in her belly, but she does not sound like a fan of the local Icelandic treats. Then, in a move that totally made me the most frustrated with her of all, she sees this Morse code message. She goes to the pool without a coat. Okay, you're indoors, but you're not bringing a coat once you leave your room? Then she gets in the pool by herself. with. Why didn't you turn on the lights at the pool? Darby's just in a bad place. I gotta accept that she's doing a lot of things. The writers are making her do a lot of things so she can be in danger so we can have cliffhanger endings. But oh, my Lord. Andy Ronson. Down several layers deep beneath the hotel, Andy and Lee have their private dwelling. Andy really is obsessed with Zoomer. And he wants Zoomer to be King Arthur. Andy has known since he was 19 years old that he's sterile. And he's known since the beginning that Zoomer was somebody else's kid. Andy also seems to have a mysterious illness. And that medical center is set up for him. And Eva is giving him what he calls life extension therapy. The morphine is meant for Andy. Andy was in that medical suite when Bill died. He was there with Eva. This scan is helpful. It still doesn't show us who ordered the tea with three cups for Bill's room. Now Andy believes that Bill and Rohan's death is sabotage. He flatters Darby for a bit, saying she's been one step ahead of him, and he proposes that she works with him. Now Marius tells Andy that the Wall Street Journal is calling, and he gets real mad. Who told the Wall Street Journal? But Andy himself claims that he called Bill's mom and told her about the death, so how can he be shocked that this is getting out? This whole project is described as an apocalypse timeshare for millionaires. I mentioned Andy doesn't get votes in the poll. What do you think? Could Andy be the killer? Lee Anderson, or should I say Marie Larson. We find out that Lee, when Bill was killed, was upstairs playing poker, and she left at some point to go check on Zoomer after 11 p.m. She claims that she took the elevator from the medical bay down to Zoomer. If she was in the medical bay, that means she was in the room where those morphine shots were. Lee is hashtag not happy that Darby is telling people a bunch of things about her and about her child. And she is really shocked, appears to be shocked, is this an act, when Darby tells her that Andy is sterile. In Lee's purse, Darby finds a black wig and a bunch of credit cards and a passport from this Marie Larson. Was Lee about to GTFO and get away from this? 
Was she going to hop on the boat with Rowan, or was she going to use this fake passport to go through an airport? Lee, I wrote in my notes, maybe she's insane. When she came out of the restroom and she says, I'm not mad at you, Darby. It's not good to keep secrets. Whoa, hello. Now, Lee is the person who tells her husband, Andy, to give Darby a moment. By doing that, that allows Darby the freedom to be alone and to be attacked. Martin in room 10. Again, not much in this episode. He does go out to the fire pit and join the Losers Club. Oliver claims that he had sex with David in his room on the night Bill died. David got a call, David left, but then he showed up later. David showed up later, Oliver says, at his room. Oliver, he can walk a bit. And of course, we find this out right now when somebody who's walking comes and attacks Darby. Zeba. Zeba hangs with Lou May at the fire pit. She's pitching the idea for a revolt. She claims that her people are nomads who never stop mourning. Thinking back through this, Zeba was the one who came to this retreat to see Bill, to see Fangs. Did she come to this retreat specifically to kill him? Not likely at all, but hey, sure. Lu Mei. Lu Mei survived the Cultural Revolution in China. On the night Bill died, she claimed she lost money to Lee while playing poker. We know Lu Mei is a hacker. She can hack computers. She tried to hack so she could reach her security team to get her out of this death hotel. She created software that helped protect people. Admittedly, it did this by trying to predict violence and other crimes. And she claimed she did it to keep people safe. There are a couple things you want to keep in mind about Lou May. Number one is the Rohan death and the pacemaker. She's the only one who seemingly knows about a pacemaker because her father had one, and that might be a way to attack someone. Lou May also may have stated a motive. In episode four, Lou May made this statement where she's like, look at this. Somebody invited all their competitors and enemies to one place and then kills them all. Did she perhaps say her motive that she got all her competitors and enemies in one place and they're all dying? David. David is ice cold. He called Darby a non-playable character. Hello. If we can trust any of this technology, David's call that interrupted his time with Oliver was from Bill. Do you think this was true? It was only a 27-second call. What would those two be talking about? Todd. Todd totes the party line. He escorts Darby back to her room when Andy says do it. Todd, we're going to get to this later in the theory section, but Todd, rather out of the blue, says, you know, my brother died via drowning. He mentions it was supposedly an accident. And then, of course, what happens at the end of the episode? Darby is going to drown, and it could be framed as an accident. She has been drinking and snorting Adderall. Todd claims he's loyal to this family. Does he mean the Ronsons, or could he mean his own with Eva? Eva is not a fan of Darby or her questions, and she has the code to get morphine. AI Ray. Ray claims to be a good listener. Of course he is. He's listening to everything everybody says. Hotel manager Marius. To quote Zeba, F off, Marius. Marius, again, you wouldn't think could have much to do with this, but he was supposed to be playing poker at the table with the others. But we know from Darby's movements that she bumped into Marius on the night Bill died. What do you guys think? Is Marius in any way involved in this? Zoomer. Unlike Bill, Zoomer doesn't look to be thrilled once he's hugged by a weird old Darby. Zoomer's trust fund is just making interest, making bank. Dollar dollar bill, Zoomer. Now let's get to your feedback. And first, we're going to read this feedback that we got on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash double PHQ. It's from Jose, who wrote, What if Andy is AI built by Lee? And Lee built him as a figurehead because of the trauma from her doxing. She doesn't believe a woman will be respected as a tech leader, so she makes one. Lee's child Zoomer is obviously Bill's and not Andy's. Ooh, I love that theory, Jose. On YouTube, Catherine gave us this feedback, asking, How did Darby survive the freezing temperatures when she was being pulled back to the resort in Episode 4? Darby did not have a helmet. Wonderful point, Catherine. Joe wrote, It may seem a little too obvious, but what is constant about the killer is the ability to hack at a seemingly high level. This limits the suspects greatly. To me, it's either Lee or Darby. Oliver and Andy are tech savvy, but in episode 4, Andy couldn't even hack the helmet to save Sean. Joe goes on to add an extremely out there take, and that is Martin is actually the mastermind and this is all one big movie for him. Ooh, thank you, Joe. We love out there theories, and this show kind of encourages them. 
a longtime Double L loyal listener and Double C Clue Crew member. It's Luca who wrote, Darby is in fact an android, which is why Andy, her creator, is looming over her. The real Darby was shot dead by the Silver Doe Killer. Bill, Rohan, and Lee are all co-conspirators in trying to let the secret out that Andy is booting up other people's consciousness. Andy is probably going to kill his wife, Lee, next. Woo, wonderful prediction by Luca. Now, I think it's Taylor. It could be May. It could be Taylor May. They wrote, Todd and his doctor wife. My gut feeling tells me they are definitely bad guys. I assume that's where the morphine came from. We should suspect that they were the only two that knew the code to get the morphine when it's locked up. Another thing, I don't believe Todd's wife, Eva, is actually a doctor. She couldn't even perform the tracheotomy. I love these thoughts and good points. Nicole wrote, I think that Lee killed Bill. Not only is she close to him and knows him very well, but she also has a kid by Bill. She claims that she doesn't have time to hack because of Zoomer, but Zoomer's been found multiple times by Darby all by himself doing his own thing. Where is Lee during those times? And Courtney gave us this last bit of feedback where she said, This almost death, that's the one of Sean at the end of episode 4, and the death of Rohan are both technology being used and turned against you. So I think whoever the killer is, is someone who is against technology, trying to show you how it's not good. Ooh, smart thought, Courtney. Now, I always just read a bit of the feedback. I do it because, hey, we're trying to solve this together. Let's solve this show. But also because if you're on YouTube, you need to read all the comments. There's so many smart thoughts in the comments. I mentioned last week's podcast. We had over 100 comments. Keep them coming. Let's stay engaged. We got to solve this. And that's going to lead to our theory this week. Okay, now let's get to this theory, and it's going to be short and sweet, but it is a couple things people online are talking about. Now, when the killer pushed Darby down, the killer's message was, there's no end to this labyrinth. If you reach the center, you will not get Bill back. I do not want to take another life. Don't force my hand. Let's look at the first part of that sentence. There's no end to this labyrinth. Now, let's flash back to Lee's toast at the first dinner. Her toast was, to finding a way out. A way out of the labyrinth? Okay, let's go a bit further. I mentioned that out of the blue in this episode, Todd's like, I want to have a couple lines. (laughs) This actor's like, give me some dialogue to say. So he has this story about his brother who died while drowning. Then later on, Darby almost drowns. Think about episode four. Now this is, you got to put some things together, but Sean was talking about, ah, my dad. He gassed himself. He cut off his oxygen and committed suicide. That's what Sean said about her dad. Later on in that episode, what happened? Sean lost oxygen and she almost, you know, suffocated. Is this whole thing just fake, not real? A lot of people online think Bill's not dead. His body's no longer in the hotel. Could Bill have faked his death because it was the only way Darby would love him? At the fire pit, when they're saying people's names and almost toasting the dead, Darby won't say Bill's name as if he's not dead or he could come back from the dead. Would you be happy if it's the equivalent of it was all a dream scenario? Write down in the comments and let me know. Let's see if we can break the comment number this week. We'll be back next week looking at chapter six entitled Crime Scene, that's S-E-E-N, Crime Scene. Darby uncovers the secret retreat within the retreat. In the past, she and Bill come face to face with the Silver Doe Killer. All right, guys, next week, that's our last chance. We got seven days, okay, more than seven days to solve this. Let's work together. Let's solve a murder at the end of the world. Talk to you next week.